Hello and welcome back to RailsQuest. This is just going to be a quick video, sort of along the lines of a gem highlight. I just learned about this on X. So it looks like Kristoff has a new gem for integrating with AI. And it's the first Ruby gem that has an API that's starting to approach something. I, I mean, Honestly, it looks really good. It's the first one that's really impressed me with its API as far as how you use it in the code. So let's take a look and I'll just give you kind of a cold impressions on why I like this gem at first glance. I haven't even used it, sight unseen. This is just my initial gut response to this gem. And I'll show you a little bit of how I've been integrating with AIs almost in rebellion to the established conventions around it because I think it should just, we need to keep things simple and this API seems more refined. So we have an adapter that you can build to a certain backend. Uh, so OpenAI is one, you know, Anthropic, all these different companies that produce these LLMs that we can use via their APIs. You simply plug in your API key, you set up some options, and you have yourself an adapter. And then you can create a chat request. I love this API. You create a conversation, and then you can build up this conversation using a DSL, system message. A DSL, if you don't know, is a domain-specific language. So the domain, in this case, is an LLM chat conversation. So there is a DSL, domain specific language, which are really easy to create with Ruby. One of the awesome things about Ruby, and it just reads so beautifully. System message, do, content, text, right? It, you just go from top to bottom, you read it, and you know exactly what's happening. We've got a system message, then a user message, and we fill in some content there. And then we request a response from the chat. We get the response and we can check whether it was successful or not and do something with it. Awesome, awesome stuff. He has a whole thread on this. We've got a link to the GitHub repository we can take a look at here. Has similar examples. And just, I'm impressed with the broad range of different services that it integrates with. And like he says here, there's a unified interface between different things. I'm really excited to try out this, the vision integration. So very impressed. This is Endless Int International Intelligence Gem. Now, and here's my comment there. Let's take a look at how I integrate with an AI. I've kind of settled on this API and it's worked well for me with several different code bases. You have an AI object and you call the ask method on it and you pass in whatever backend you'd like. In this case, it's Claude. Then you set, you can set a system message. Instead of having sort of a DSL flavor, I've got more of a builder with chainable methods. It would be easy to change that into a DSL, but why bother if there's a really nice open source library that does all everything that I want. I'm, I'm looking forward to evaluating that. Here's one of the patterns that I personally like. It's It maybe is a little bit of a uh, personal preference thing, but I like to have on success and you pass a block to it and it runs whatever inside there. I think this allows for some flexibility. Uh, it's more flexible than just a Boolean. Once you have a Boolean with a conditional, you are locked into that frame of reference. But if you you have this more kind of event driven thing. There's some indirection there and it does make things less obvious. So there's a little bit of a possibility for bugs to sneak in in that way. But I like the flexibility of having a method to call with a block instead of having a conditional. Another one of the things I'm going to be looking at, let me just show you. This is the RailsQuest AI gems namespace here. And here's the module and you'll notice that we require faraday so one of the nice things about faraday is you can have any kind of back end for your http requests i like having that in a library or, or something like it. it doesn't have to be faraday but a way to s easily set an adapter so that if you're using a very specific http library for whatever reason maybe for performance concerns you might be using a gem like uh, typhius or something well it's very easy to swap out different back ends for http with faraday so just off off the top of my head, those are the two different API differences that I will be looking at more closely. I am not a legalist on this point, but it will be interesting to see how this plays out. And certainly an open source library that I don't have to be the only one maintaining, but I'm also familiar and invested in it, so I might contribute to it if there are problems. 
that seems like a win-win scenario. So I hope you enjoyed this gem spotlight and comparison and hearing my take on things. If you want to hear more stuff like this, please comment to that effect below. If you want to hear less stuff, if you want to hear about anything else, please let me know. And with that, have a blessed week. I'll see you next time.